guys, it's Shannon. And Paul. And Jack is here too. For those of you that like him, you can see a little bit of his legs yes. over there by Paul. Can you see his little head? I'm rubbing uh, his head. It's on camera. Only a little part of it. Yeah. Yeah. He's having a nap. He is. So today we are here with another question and answer video. Cool. So I, like I think these. this is only our second question and answer video. I think that's right. So if you guys have any questions that you have always wanted answers to, leave a comment. Here's we'll try our best. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll Google things. Yeah. <laughs> so I have my phone here. Okay. And I have a couple questions pulled. So awesome. we're going to try to go quick on some of them. Some of them are not going to be that quick, but we're going to try to get through all of them. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so first one is, um, loved seeing this. I think it was on a What Sold video. Oh, sorry, this is from, it just says at Beth dot dot dot. So okay. it... It might be a longer name, but YouTube's not showing me. Love seeing this. Have you noticed any upswing in Barbie sales since the movie came out? So, do you want me to answer that one? Yes. I have not. Having said that, I know other sellers have. The reason why I haven't noticed an uptick in Barbie sales is because I haven't listed any new Barbie stuff in a really long time. And I feel like for us, when the sales start going up, it's because we have listed more frequently that type of item so if we list a whole bunch of let's say video games all of a sudden we start selling a lot more video games yes if we sell or list a whole bunch of new clothes we start selling more of that uh, but i know that on ebay sales did go up from the barbie movie i would imagine now that is steadying out and kind of slowing down but some of the barbie movie dolls are still sold out and going for really good money yes so. Yeah, they sure are. There's a new Barbie. It's a Ken. I want to. Oh, He's wearing the shirt. Kenuff. I'm Ken. I'm Kenuff or Ken Enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that one's kind of funny. Anyway, so thank you for that question. Um, next one. This is going to be one for Paul to answer. So this okay. is from Tyla Rosie Jane Smith. Love you guys. I was just wondering, when you say the stuff you sell are yours or Paul's, do you keep the money you make separate so you get paid for your things you sell and Paul does for his? Or do you put it together as a joint account kind of thing? I was just wondering. And my sister Robin and I have been dying to know if you ever sold all those Spider-Man pins. Okay. So. Well, thank you so much for the comment. <laughs> um, so uh, to answer for your sister and you, we have not sold all the Spider-Man pins. In fact, we have sold no more of the Spider-Man pins since that video has been filmed. Yep. So something might have to be done with the Spider-Man pins. <laughs> uh, the first part of your question is, no, Shannon and I combine, all of our finances are combined. Um, for a, an incredibly brief, literal moment in time, when we first got together, before we were even married, we kept our finances separate a little bit. Um, and ever since then, they've been combined. Yep. So, yeah, it, it's it's just a figure of speech for us. Oh, that's something of hers. That's something of mine. But it's really it's not all just ours. Mostly what that means for us is it's stuff that I purchased or I listed or yeah. stuff he purchased or he listed um, just because that's something that we just tend to fall into patterns of what we list. Yeah. So that's all that is. Yep. Okay, so next question is going to be from Rainbow Husky 2002. I like Rainbow Husky. Rainbow Husky. Hi, Paul and Shannon. I have been watching PS Toy Reviews for over three years now. Thank I you. do have a question for you. Since most of the items in storage are not listed, how do you find what you're looking for? <laughs> I have one-eyed Willie's map. <laughs> <laughs> for Goonies fans. This is a good question, though. This is a good How question. How do you find what you're looking for, Paul? <laughs> so Shannon is super organized. She has a whole system where she labels, like uh, she has standardized boxes, which we use bankers boxes for. She has them labeled and then she has a custom SKU on eBay that helps her, helps her find what box she's looking for. That would be the smart way to do things. <laughs> I just rely on my memory, which believe it or not is really, really good. Um, but there are times where I can't find some. In fact, last week we sold, uh, something that's been listed for like six years that I was not able to find. And what's kind of, sh what's really shameful is eBay has this thing where you, where if you refund it, eBay will automatically relist it. I forgot to check that off. And the person came in and rebought it <laughs> to refund it again. Oh um, no, I didn't um, know that. That yeah. must've been before I woke up. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, um, 
yeah, I just keep it, I keep it in my mind. Shannon actually writes it down. Shannon's method is better than mine. Um, but my method does allow for us to rediscover things that we have forgotten that we bought. Which would be fine if it was unlisted inventory. Yeah. But listed inventory. Yeah. I have to get a lot better. Um, I have to change the way I'm doing things that I'm significantly trying to downsize the amount of inventory I have, which will help dramatically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that, that's kind of the short answer for that. Really, Paul goes on lots of adventures. I do. Trying to find things that sold. The majority of them are very, very short adventures, but some are longer adventures. A lot of times I go to storage. No, sometimes I go to storage <laughs> with Paul and he's always praying that that's one of the days when he knows where the things are yeah, it's, because he doesn't want to face the shame. There's those moments <laughs> of stress where that door rolls up and I'm like, oh, I hope I know where this is at. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. I don't have that problem. And the only reason why I don't have that problem is not because I'm better than Paul or better organized than Paul. It's because I don't want to have to rely on my memory of where things are because I would never find anything. I don't know. I feel like it's a game. I feel like I'm winning if I find it. Yeah. I guess. I feel like I don't even want to play that game. Well. I want to go right to the spot where it's supposed to be because I have other things to that's the, remember. That's the smarter way to do things. <laughs> okay. Um... Let's see. This is from at Julie Doyle, 1549. Are you two married? Yes. Yes, we are married. Yes, Julie at 1549. Yes. We are married. We have been married for almost 30 years. Almost 30 years. Uh, together for over 30 years. Yep. Uh, for those of you wondering, our from when we met to when we got married was just about 15 months. I'd say 14. Just about 14 months. We met in February and we got married April yeah. of the following yeah. year. If we were on the prices right, I would be over. You would be over. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. So we are married uh, almost 30 years and loving every minute of it. Yes. That's right. All right. Next question. Yeah. Oh, no. This isn't a question. This is a comment. And I love it because okay. you guys are our biggest enablers. Ah, I guess. And I love it. Enable away. Se <laughs> several of you have told us that Goose Creek Candles came out with an elf collection yep. and wanted to know if we bought it. We have not yet. I don't know if Paul's going to buy it or not. I have a candle right here. You do have a candle. It's not we a Goose Creek. We haven't shown that one on this We haven't shown this yet. one yet. What does it smell like? Raspberry Thumper. You don't like raspberry. It smells like lost storage items. <laughs> If they only smelled that good. <laughs> um, anyway, so Goose Creek also has a ton of new, really cute Christmas candles. They Just saying. do. But I this saw is, a few of them. This is from Elizabeth Rass or Raz. There are new mini brands books. Ooh. So they look awesome, and Paul can buy books that are cheaper to send. Yay. And Shannon gets tiny books and stationery. So you have thought of everything. That's oh, perfect. Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. I think we need to... We have not seen those yet, but thank you for letting us know because yeah. then we'll definitely be on the lookout for those. Yeah. So we appreciate that. All right. Uh, Jordan Gassman 1177. Hi guys. Seeing both of you is like spending time with friends. Awesome. I have tried to find you on eBay, but I am having trouble. Can you put your store info in each video of what sold on eBay? Thanks. Okay. Um, it should be in the description of every eBay what sold video. Now, if you're watching like on a TV, I don't know that it's easy to see the description. Oh yeah, yeah. I've never been um, able to find that. I've never looked, but I've never been able to find it. Yeah, I know. I watch YouTube a lot on a TV and yeah. I feel like the description's hard, but if you're on a computer, a phone, things like that, just go into the description yep. and you will find it there. If not, you can always just go into Google and type in we're back in NC123 and then say like eBay store yep. and it'll bring it up. So we, so like W-E-R-E, -E, no yeah, apostrophe, yeah. just W-E-R-E-B-A-C-K-I-N-N-C-1. -E the number two, one, two, three, not three. spelled out. Yes. Just the numbers. Yep. Anyway, check the description. It should be in there. Um. Several people have asked that, so that goes yeah. to anybody wanting to know. It's probably TV. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Uh, the description is really hard to see on the yeah. TV. Okay. This is going to be from Regina Barnett 710. This was on a Goose Creek candle haul video. All right. You guys are so funny. And then she has the little crying nice. emoji. 
Um, please ignore the judgy McJudgy pants out there. Buy as many candles as you want and please share them with us. We watch your other channels as well and I love you guys. Cheers. Another enabler. I love it, yes. Regina. Well, I liked the judgy McJudgy pants. Judgy McJudgy Because pants. we have said that before too. Yes. I like that. That is cute. So yeah. I just thought that was funny. Um, wanted to share that comment. Thank you so much. Thank you. You made us laugh. Um, okay, uh, now let's see. This is one that Paul is going to spend a little more time talking about, probably. Okay. This is from... I'm looking at Chan's phone. I can't read it. Yeah, he can't read it from here. Oh, <laughs> I've never heard these comments I know before. I have said your name before on the channel, and I probably messed it up then, too. It's Aurora's Kitty 9242, oh, okay. yeah. Aurora's yeah. Kitty. So this is going way back four weeks ago on a Storage Sunday video we did where Paul uh, shared the alternative romance books. Who could um, forget if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But the question is, is it Christian to read books like these? Vampires and erotica and such things, genuine question. Okay. And I'm assuming you're asking that of us because we have shared before on the channel that we are Christian. So Yes. All right. Take it away, Paul. All right. Uh, great question. I love questions like these that are deep and thoughtful. Um, is it Christian or not? Well, like Shan said, we we are Christians. Um, I would say that I would say let your conscience be your guide. Um, the reason why I would say that is this: there are going to be if you get a hundred Christians in a room and you ask them all the same question, you're probably going to get a hundred different opinions. And what's amazing is what those people say in that room and what they actually do or what they actually think are going to be wildly different. Mm -hmm. Most things, I, in, in, in my opinion and in my experience, most people who say they're Christian show the world one thing and what they're actually thinking, what they're actually doing might be something totally different. And I just don't have a whole lot of time or patience for that. So um, I totally get if you live in an area and you are around a lot of people who would be very judged who would have judgy McJudgy pants <laughs> on, about that, um, then probably, probably, probably doing that would not be advisable because, you know, we're very, we're very social creatures. Um, we, even though we shouldn't, we care a lot about what people around us think, friends and family being, being most coworkers. And yeah, it would be very, very difficult to be somebody that enjoys that and is constantly being judged for that or being told that you're not Christian enough or whatever. Um, if it's something that you enjoy and it's not, you know, and, and you feel consciously, con your conscience is not bothered by it, then have fun. Yeah. If it's something that you don't feel good about or you start reading, you're like, oh, wow, that doesn't sound quite right to me. Then I encourage you to do some research about it. Think about it um, and, and and find out where you land on that theologically. I have read through the Bible many, many times front to back. I have not seen anything in there telling me not to read vampire, billionaire, werewolf, erotica. <laughs> So um, just an example that I can give to is uh, we went to um, one church for quite a few years, a yeah. very large church, yeah. and there were lots of people that attended the church who thought um, Halloween was bad, Santa is bad, uh, Spider-Man movies You cannot were bad. watch Harry Potter because that's Potter witchcraft. Lord of the Rings was bad. But at that same church, the pastor from the pulpit used Spider-Man and Lord of the Rings in uh, sermons. Sermons, yeah. So, as good examples. <laughs> yeah, as good examples. Not yes. as bad. Like, yeah. he used them as um, just good part of like the fun examples. And um, I think everybody has... A different opinion and honestly I think a lot of it comes down to opinion right um, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, I don't I don't think that anybody I don't think anybody is going to stand before God and get into heaven or not get into heaven because they did or did not read romance books regardless what the genre was we're gonna get a delivery we are gonna get a delivery <laughs> personally I think 
this is just my personal opinion, but I think what you do and show and like how you treat people is so much more important than telling somebody you shouldn't read that or you shouldn't do that. You need to just kind of have the confidence in who you are and what you're doing. And back to like what Paul said, if it's, <laughs> they're looking at us through the window. <laughs> do you need to sign something? Probably. Yep. <laughs> I was going to go grab that. I was rambling. I'm probably going to cut that rambling out. So okay. did you finish answering I what, did. what you think? I did. Yes. All right. Next question. Okay. Wrong. This is actually going to be the last question. Well, the last one. Okay. And, ooh, where'd it go? Oh no, where'd it go? There it is, <laughs> okay. A picture of our couch. That's a picture of Jack on our couch. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so the last one is from Lisa Remberg 6366. Lisa. This is gonna be on another candle hall, okay. a Goose Creek candle hall. So there's a long comment All right. slash question. All right. This is going to sound rude. But I really am genuinely curious. What do you do with all this stuff? It's so incredibly excessive. With the economy and the environment the way it is, such extreme consumerism seems such a dated concept to me. With many people around the world trying to be more mindful, what is the driver to need huge piles of stuff that can never be realistically used by two people? So before you answer that, I just want to say, um, you preface this question saying this is going to sound rude. I don't think it, it sounds sound rude. rude. If people have a question, yeah, ask away. If, yes. It's not rude. If you were like, you know, you suck and you smell bad, that'd be rude. <laughs> Might anyway. also be true. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I don't I don't think it was a rude question. Yeah. So so yeah, so I agree with you. Number one, I don't think it was a rude question. Um, thank you very much for a very thoughtful question. That that's that's how I would like that. And again, I love these deep questions. Two deep questions and a video. Oh, <laughs> we sorry. Not, yeah, we did not this, pace this very well. I did not because <laughs> that's this okay. is the last one. So that's okay. Okay, so this is a great question. Um so yeah. <laughs> uh, YouTube is social media, um, and I'm, I'm just going to start off, I'm going to start off right real quick by saying Shannon and I have, have, have done our YouTube channels in a certain way. We have tried to be very authentic and present ourselves like what you see on screen is, is what you get. Yes. Um, we watch a lot of content creators that, that are scripting content meaning they're, they're just figuring out what they're going to say before they turn the camera on. We don't. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But we also see people that are intentionally um, creating inauthentic situations. Yes. And I, I don't have a whole lot of love for that outside of the entertainment value. So I think, I think that you need to be very aware of that with social media. Like right now, we're going to tell yeah. you, we're getting another delivery. Getting another delivery. <laughs> That delivery that I just got a minute ago, that was for my son. It was for our <laughs> It wasn't son. our stuff. Um, so as far as, as far as like buying a whole bunch of stuff goes, Shannon and I both really enjoy stuff. That, that's that's kind of how we interact with the world. Um, we have been... We enjoy shopping together. We enjoy shopping together. We enjoy, own, we enjoy collecting stuff. We enjoy owning stuff. And because we're resellers, we know that... So like this candle, just as an example. We know that... This, this might have value to us via using it and enjoying it. It might have value to us sitting on a shelf and enjoying the way it looks. It might have emotional value to us because it's part of a bigger collection. Or it might have actual value that we could sell this online or via a garage sale or whatever. Because they do retire candle sets. They do. And or as gifts that has value. Or as a gift that has value. So... When we buy stuff to show on any of our channels, either our toy channels or like this channel, um, we're actually buying content that, that we're creating. It, it gives us something to sit here and talk about and we're able to share that experience with you guys. And there's a lot, there's a lot of living vicariously through other people. I watch people who collect very, very expensive watches. Funnily enough, they're just like Shannon and I. They're, most of the people I watch are dealers as well because you know to buy and collect high-end watches is incredibly expensive. Yes. <laughs> so it's like, well, they actually have two or three watches, which is still a lot of money, but they might show 10 or 15. Like a lot of those are being sold and, you know, and everything else. So, um, 
So yeah, just, just kind of be aware of that. So for us, it's not an excuse. It's not anything else. It's just how we've chosen to live our life. Something else with us is our living expenses are very in line with, with our habits. Um, we actually spend far less than a lot of people do in America on our housing, believe it or not, and on our autom automobiles. Um, those and we don't run debt. Yeah, we, you know. yeah we, 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 don't, we don't have any debt payments. We don't have any student loan or credit cards or anything like that. Um, what we purchase is actually very, very in line with our, with our lifestyle. We used to purchase a lot more clothing new, and we've kind of eliminated that. Not because, not because we sat down with our budget like, oh, we can't buy new clothes anymore because we want to buy candles. It's just much more like, well... We don't need it. We just, yeah, we just don't get the same enjoyment we did before out of buying those. And we're more conscious of that, but now we buy candles. Yeah. <laughs> so there will come a day when we don't buy candles and we'll buy something else. We'll be on to something else. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. And something I wanted to bring up as well is when you're watching anybody, when you're watching a video, you have no idea what those people do with the rest of the money or the rest of their time. So you're only yeah. judging based on the one thing you're seeing. But a lot of people out there spend a lot of money, let's say, on eating out at fancy restaurants. Yes. Or maybe they spend money on very luxury vacations. Like we have yeah. family that is constantly going out of the country on these grand, beautiful trips. Yeah. And we don't do that just because that's not our thing. Right. So when we're spending, you know, $150 on a candle haul, like that is so small potatoes versus if we were somebody who was taking trips to Europe constantly or whatever. So, yeah. so where people are spending their money varies very drastically yeah. depending on who it is you're talking to. So I enjoy a podcast by a guy named Ramit Sethi. Uh, he, he has written the book, uh, I Will Teach You Be Rich, and he is part of the Netflix documentary series, which is a very entertaining. Totally, you guys should watch it. He's great. Yeah, he, he is great. He's very enjoyable to listen to, and he tackles a lot of, uh, a lot of financial psychology issues. Um, he has a saying that I'm going to borrow where he says, Ex spend extravagantly on the things that you like and cut mercilessly on the things that you don't. Shannon brought up vacations. We do, we do, we do travel, but our vacations are incredibly modest compared to yes. things that we could do or things that we, things that other people within our circle are doing. And so that money is freed up to do other stuff with that yeah. we enjoy much more because honestly, we would not get the same value as our family that, that goes outside of the country and does these things. We could go to those same places and we would not get the same value and experience right. that they do. So that's something that we're able to cut. And so we're able yeah. to do other things and have a great time with that. So, yep. yeah. So I hope that answered that question. Um, was that the last question? That was the last question. And regarding the economy, just so you know, it helps the economy when people buy stuff. So it does, we're it actually does. helping, it's all, it's not all, hurting. It's, it's all circle. That's right. It's a big circle. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. yeah. So in case anybody else was wondering, if you guys have any other further questions about that, feel free to leave. Paul would probably yeah. love to do a whole video just talking about economics oh, man, and spending and all that, that kind of awesome. stuff. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah. and, and one more thing just to close. I really hope that nobody who ever who watches any of our channels is encouraged to spend money that they don't have on, yes, something, that, don't do that. on something that is not going to bring them value. Right. Um, something I have learned through my life is sometimes I do have to experiment with things like... I might, I might go some, to a candle place and be like, I could be a candle guy. I could be a guy who collects and likes candles. And I'm not saying that amusingly. I might need to do an experiment. Like, hey, I'm going to spend a little bit of money that I have that I can afford to, to lose and to buy with these candles and see if I want to be a guy who And then who you might candles. not be, and then you don't buy anymore. And then I move on. Or I might be like, this is the greatest thing in the world. I'm going to buy more. And It remains to be seen. We have not purchased the elf candles or Christmas candles yeah. yet from Goose Creek. So we'll see. Right. Oh, and just real quick, because I know our battery is going to die. Yeah. Um, somebody keeps leaving uh, comments asking if we have gotten any of that with as PR, meaning free no, from companies. We have not. And if we ever show anything on any of our channels that we have been sent for free, we always disclose that yeah. both verbally and in the description. Yes. So if you want to know, if we haven't said it, we didn't get it for free. That's we right. used our own money. That's right. So With our own money. <laughs> that's right. All right, guys. Well, it makes a difference. If you get something for free, yeah. maybe you like it because you got it for free, but you wouldn't spend your own money on it. That's true. We're continually spending our own money on the candles. Therefore, we like them. That's true. Even though that wasn't a Goose Creek one. That was a Bath and Body Works. Yeah, but whatever. it's just a convenient <laughs> prop. It just happened to be here. Yeah. Turns out I am a candle guy. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later. See you later, guys.